internet friends. Welcome back once again. Thank you all so very much for joining me here today. I have quite a lot to talk about in today's topic. Uh, you can tell just by the length of the video that there's going to be quite a bit that we go over. Before I get into that topic, though, I do want to make a couple of quick announcements. Uh, the first one is that I am opening up a few more personal coaching slots for my one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you're interested in that or have any questions or want to look into it further, go ahead and shoot an email to training at gmail.com. Uh, if you are looking for something a little bit less intensive than a one-on-one -on -one coaching situation, I do encourage you to look into the guided programming uh, group that I am a part of with Garrett Blevins and Brandon Campbell. Uh, the three of us are kind of cumulatively coaching a group of people. And if you're interested in that, um, go ahead and in the description down below, there will be links to a video that uh, is posted where Garrett kind of explains sort of the ideas behind the programming and a link to the website to sign up if you're interested in that. Uh, so those are two opportunities if you're looking for a little bit of guidance in your strength journey and either want some one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or you want some a more of a group setting uh, with the three of us. Uh, those I think are both options and obviously I'm biased and that they both benefit me directly um, but I, I promise you guys that uh, they're, they're, they're going to be worth it if it's something that you're interested in doing. So anyway, today into the topic, uh, like I said, it is a longer video, and so if you're, if you're, if you're just wondering kind of what the cliffs are, uh, I guess I'll give you guys that in advance. Um, personally, I tend to gravitate more towards long-form content when I'm looking for things on YouTube. I like to hear ideas discussed and laid out instead of just being mentioned and hit these bullet points. But uh, the things that we're really going to be talking about today are kind of breaking down the the things that really lead to being successful in whatever the pursuit is that you uh, are choosing to to partake in and the overly simplified answer for that is the amount of time spent in the process of of that pursuit and if <laughs> just doing the thing for long enough and with enough focus to actually show the growth that's the most important thing is the time spent trying to get better and then kind of the all-encompassing idea is based off of the quote which is also the title of the video sacrifice to win and kind of what that means within the context and uh, just I'd say almost from a shallow perspective or from a surface level perspective the idea of doing the little things and training yourself and learning to function and do the things that you need to to move towards your end goal or whatever uh, whatever your version of success is to make sure that you line up the actions that you're taking and the decisions that you make to put you in that direction and to drive you towards that in also to open up your acceptance and awareness of the idea that you have to move beyond just being motivated for that to work. Very rarely will someone get to the level that they would deem as successful purely on motivation. You have to establish systems to get you to that point. And so that's kind of the broad strokes generalization of what we're going to be talking about today. And if you're not interested in, in the breakdown of what that means, uh, if that was poignant enough for you and you're, you're ready to get on with your day, then I guess this is <laughs> this is the point to get off because we're going to get kind of a little bit more nitpicky and we're going to talk about those ideas and what they really mean and the ways that I am attempting to implement them in my own life and seeing them implemented in other people's lives to uh, really pursue excellence and constant states of progression towards your idealized self. So there that we're gonna get right into it and again I'll, I'll reiterate that the idea the topic is fundamentally based on the idea that most people who are at the highest level of whatever it is that they are pursuing are there because they have put enough time into the pursuit to develop those skills and improve themselves to get there yes there are 
variance in in someone's uh, kind of natural ability. There there are variations within that, but this is this extends beyond just weightlifting. This is just about in anything that you're choosing to pursue in life. The only thing that you can control is the amount of time that you are putting in on developing the skill uh, or the ability that you are you're trying to become successful at. And most things boil down to improving the actual skills. And so that that's the thing you can control. You can't control your genetics, you can't control uh, your your circumstance. The only thing you really have the ability to to make the decision to do is to prioritize what it is that you want to become your best at and to put your time and effort and to accumulate enough quality time in that direction to make a meaningful response to actually have it be effective and that's a very important distinction it can't just be junk time it can't just be something that you do without your attention without your focus and without it being direct with emphasis on being effective, not just efficient, not just cramming more stuff in with the time, but making sure that the effort that you're doing and putting into whatever that pursuit is, is focused on actually getting better and maximizing the amount of time spent working to to grow in your skill and minimizing the amount of time that you are... Uh, not just taking away from it, but minimizing the things that are forcing you to take time away from it. So in the context of our uh, of what you're watching right now, this video is not training footage. This is not the the kind of thing you guys are used to seeing on my channel, not just for the length of the video, but because this isn't me lifting weights. This is my uh, some some kind of some barbell mashing, I guess, my sort of my post-session mobility routine. And it you see the video is 30 minutes long because it's pretty typical for me after a session to spend about 30 minutes uh, focusing on doing some of this, this work to try and decrease the amount of time that I need to recover and to kind of increase the effectiveness of my of my following session of the next session that I'm doing trying to limit the time that it takes for me to recover this allows me to handle more volume uh, this allows me to be less affected by uh, mobility impingement that comes from when you're tight and and not able to hit the correct positions and the lifts that you're doing you have to dedicate yourself to doing these little things and it kind of ties into that the the phrase that we're using uh, to kind of encompass a lot of this with sacrifice to win. And I think it's more profound than that. <laughs> it's it's something that most people use as a motivational tool. They'll say, they'll say it as a, as a direct motivation for an individual set or a session. But the real sacrifices that you're making to win or to push for your, uh, your highest level in whatever it is and, and chasing the success that you have kind of put as the primary focus of your attention is... The, the sacrificing of what you maybe want to do right now or what you're kind of uh, directly motivated or inspired to do and instead relying on the decisions that are going to best uh, impact your pursuit. The things that you choose to do, even if you don't feel like they're what you want to do right now, in order to set yourself up for the best possible position to move forward in and kind of hold to that original idea of success being determined by the amount of time that you spend doing or in pursuit and practice of that of whatever that skill is or whatever that uh, ultimate goal ends up being in this case it happens to be mobility for me uh, it also is the nutrition aspect. If you're doing something physical, the, the fuel that you put into your body is very important. And if you are negligent about that and not paying attention to it, it's one thing that is that you could be doing better to improve your situation and not paying attention to it. Instead, doing what you feel like doing uh, as an emotional being, I guess, as a human, <laughs> and, and not systematizing it for yourself is likely going to lead you 
away from your highest level, your highest ceiling of performance that you personally are able to reach. Same goes for sleep. If you are not prioritizing your recovery through sleep and the amount of time that you need to rest and let your body recover, you're limiting the effectiveness of your training sessions. You're limiting uh, the amount of volume that you can handle because your recovery is hampered by your habits. And what this really comes down to is the decisions versus the impulses. And it is something that uh, the I'm, I'm going to refer to some, some ideas. The way that they've been stated to me is from the sports psychologist uh, Weldon Green. And the idea of recognizing your internal states, which are kind of the emotional responses you have to things, the, the, the feelings that you're having right now, versus your value-driven behaviors and decisions. And fundamentally what this, what this really means is that you can't control your emotions. No one can. If you see someone who you, would, uh, you think that they're really good at controlling their emotions, they're most likely just good at controlling and deciding the behaviors that they do in spite of their emotions. You can't make yourself not mad. You can't make yourself happy if you're not. You can make choices to encourage those reactions, but for the most part, you don't actually have control of the emotional response you have to something. You have absolute control of what you choose to do during that time, what you choose to do with that emotional response. I think this is really well illustrated with uh, when people struggle to diet. And I would say most people <laughs> struggle to diet, to, to make decisions based on their, of their food intake and what they're going to do. Uh, there's a lot of people just fail. A lot of people will set themselves the dietary goals and then they don't make it to the, to the end point that they see themselves doing. Because when you begin these things, you might be very motivated and your internal states, your emotional self, all of that is lined up towards the goal that you have set. But eventually that wears off because progress comes so much slower than we expect it to, even though it comes faster than we often deserve. Uh, there's, there's something that I've talked about in the past where the idea of pursuit is a very fundamentally, uh, I'm sorry, excellence is a very fundamentally imbalanced pursuit. Uh, if you want to be the best that you can possibly be at any one thing, every bit of time and attention and focus that you put towards something else is taking that attention and focus and time away from that thing. You can be a balanced person. You can become good and skilled at many different things because developing a, ba a baseline of skill and, and getting significantly better than a, than a zero proficiency comes very quickly. You can develop a kind of beginner and almost up to intermediate status really fast in just about anything that you start doing. But then what happens is that progress slows down significantly and becomes exponentially more difficult to continue making progress. The first, uh, I, it's often said, the first 80% of progress is made with 20% of the work and then the last 80% of the work is used to keep chipping away at those higher percentage points to get you closer and closer to the best that you can be at that thing. And some you don't need to be the world's greatest concert uh, piano player to be able to play the piano and enjoy it. You don't need to be the strongest lifter in the world to be able to find value and enjoyment from lifting weights and live a balanced and healthy life. But if those are your goals, you have to recognize that, that it will take an exceptional and uncommon, unba uncommonly unbalanced effort to go beyond that point and to recognize that on a relative scale, your best effort may be different and end you or will land you somewhere else in the grand scheme of things, but it's it is relative that it takes your best effort 
to get as good as you can possibly get at any one of these things. And so we'll go back to the the idea of the nutrition and people failing diets. You might say, well, I want to lose weight and do this thing, but you'll start to lose that motivation once you've been doing it for a while because motivation is fleeting and you have to make the decision to either listen to your internal states that say i would really like that cheeseburger i'd really like that pizza uh or if you're counting your macros say i I really i'm out of fat for the day but i want to eat something that has way more than it should and that becomes easier an easier decision to make if you are constantly making that choice uh, versus looking towards the goals that you have set and deciding that you are going to recognize that you're having that emotional response, you're having that thing that you want to do in the right now, but you're making a value-driven decision to say the value that I've decided is important to me is that I want to lose weight or I want to be successful in this diet, and so I'm going to choose not to make that decision that will satisfy the immediate self and, and will address this emotional state that I'm in right now, I'm going to uh, intentionally recognize and ignore that in favor of the thing that that I have decided is the ultimate goal and is what I'm moving towards as, as my decision and is the value that I have given the decision that I'm making. And for me, that that is spending the time doing this stuff this is intentionally kind of boring footage it's it's pretty uncommon i think on youtube to have someone say that where they're saying the the video part of this is sort of boring i didn't speed it up uh, this is this is a pretty accurate sort of idea of of what i would do after a session and i do this after every session and i do about an hour of this on my off days uh, not because that's what everyone needs to do to be successful but i have found that if I'm not paying enough attention to this, if I'm not putting this kind of effort and work into my particular journey, then the work that I am able to do in the following session, whether it's the next day or whether it's two days later, is negatively impacted and it is not as effective. I'm not able to handle as much volume. I'm, I'm, uh, my recovery takes longer to get through and my ability to make progress and to move forward in the goals that I've set towards my value-driven decision that I want to be the best that I personally can be at this thing, uh, it, they, they become at odds. And so this becomes necessary for me to be as effective as possible when I am trying to do those things that I have set for myself. And again, This doesn't mean that you have to do this thing. This doesn't mean that you have to have the same goals that I do. This doesn't mean that your approach will look uh, exactly the same. You may have different strengths and weaknesses. You may have different things that uh, require more or less of this kind of directed effort. But relatively speaking, I'm just trying to encourage everyone through seeing this that A lot of the times, the stuff that is not as flashy, is not as obvious, is the stuff that people get hung up on. It's really easy, usually, if you're the kind of person who gets uh, hyped up and inspired to lift weights, usually that's the easy part. It doesn't take a whole lot of sacrifice. It doesn't take a whole lot of, of, uh, of having to really get yourself pumped and motivated to go to the gym and lift weights if that's really what you enjoy doing. Not everyone enjoys that. So you're already kind of in a position for more success than the average person in that pursuit. Um, that's that's the way that people's directed interests play a part in, in choosing what you want to do. And uh, we would be a much more boring group of people that populate this planet if everybody was interested in just doing the same thing because everyone would be trying to just do the same thing. But... So, so you have that going for you if that's fun for you, but you might struggle with the nutrition. You might struggle with the mobility because you're uh, missing kind of the, the context of how important some of these other things are. And this is what it means when someone says sacrifice to win or the more, I guess, the, the more philosophical approach of, of putting off the what I want right now and what I feel like doing in favor of making the choice 
to do what you need to do to make the progress to move you closer and closer and closer to your goals, to maximize the amount of effective time spent practicing your craft and building your ability to grow in that direction and minimizing the amount of time that you are not able to do that. Everything else that is not focused on on improving you in that one direction is fundamentally taking your focus away. Now, we're not machines, we're not robots. No one can be so single-mindedly focused on one thing that they're able to to be a hundred percent committed to only that. Uh, that's that's I'd say what would be the ideal for someone if if the ultimate excellence is what they're really pursuing. But most people aren't, not most people, I've never heard of a person who is able to do that to the extent where nothing else matters, where they don't have any other interest or time. So it's while we're pursuing perfection, while that's the ideal that we're reaching towards, if uh, the, the ma- if skill mastery and becoming your absolute best that you are capable of being is the goal, it doesn't mean that you have to be perfect because no one is but you have to keep trying to get there and I think another part of it because you know initially when I when I introduced these topics I I put them forward and it seems pretty generic it seems pretty straightforward and simple but because we are emotional beings because we do have reactions to things it's a lot tougher than that you have to be at odds with your human nature that encourages you to listen to what your mind is saying and that is and and a lot of the internal states a lot of these emotional responses are designed to push you towards more of an equilibrium state and again this is being successful is uncommon most people who try something aren't actually able to get to that if you want to become one of the few people who is able to reach and and get within kind of grasping distance of the excellence that that you are finding to be important enough for you to to actually partake in that imbalanced pursuit uh, you have to learn to be more than just regular you have to it takes a very uncommon amount of effort to do that because most people aren't willing to or aren't uh, they don't find enough value in that end goal to warrant the discomfort that the approach takes and to warrant the decisions and the sacrifice that surrounds the thing that they're interested in. Uh, I'm a big esports fan. That's where I know of Weldon from. And a lot of people uh, will see people uh, will see people who are at the highest level in esports and say like oh they just play video games all day but to get to those highest levels they're they're not playing the game just purely for fun anymore they're playing it to be competitive they're putting a higher level of attention and focus into the way that they are doing that thing and most of the time when you get to that certain that certain level of excellence it happens with Uh, high-level lifters it happens with artists it happens with just about anybody something that initially was fun and that you got into because it was fun becomes work becomes something that you are having to put more attention and time and and effort into continuing to do because you're getting into the minutia of things I am much more critical of higher level lifters technique when they ask me about it and my own technique than I am with someone who's beginning because the expectations get higher because smaller and smaller changes yes you want to fundamentally create someone with good habits so that they don't have to unlearn those the bad habits that they pick up Uh, but when it comes to the higher level you get it you can get away with less you have to be more on top of things Um, a lot of world record lifts look much easier than they actually are because if the person you know the technique looks so on point and so solid because if they were out of position even by an inch they're going to miss that lift and that's that's something you don't really realize until you get to that point where those lifts are actually happening and someone says oh you had so much more in you well they may not have they may have had another 
two and a half kilos could have pushed them just a little bit out of position and it makes the difference between having the lift go up perfectly and, and staying within the strength that they have built in those perfect positions and being out of that and not being able to recover and and you miss the lift. So the expectations get so much higher the better you get at the thing and the more critical you have to be at the same time you also have to develop your your ability to forgive yourself for being human like i said we're all just people we're not machines we're not robots and if you held yourself to the standard that a hundred percent of the time you always made the perfect decision and you never faltered you will fail that because there is no way to to have it go that way 100% of the time. Or you'll run into something that is a little bit out of your control and that can derail your progress. If, if you know, the, your house sets on fire the night before a big meet and you end up ha- not getting any sleep and you still have to perform, uh, you know, that there are things that are sometimes out of your control. Most of the time things are really out of your control. So you need to focus in on the things that you do have control over and respect the process enough to forgive yourself when it is when you're just a person and you fail to be perfect pursue the perfection because that's the standard we're we're aiming for learn to have a short memory in that moment don't get distracted by your by your inability to be perfect perfect 100 percent of the time forgive yourself for being a person and then try to find the things that you can learn from that and improve your approach for the next time. Uh, if you have a session where it doesn't go well because your prep was poor, um, for me, if I if I miss some of these mobility sessions, maybe I'm not able to handle as much volume as I typically would be able to, and so I have to uh, regulate some of the training that I do in order to make it survivable. Um, I have to learn to forgive myself or else I'm just going to beat myself up for no reason and, and not be able to once something is done and in the past it's it's done you can't go back and change the things of that session so you have to learn to forgive yourself for those things so that you're not stuck in this negative mindset of that is that is not productive because then you're only creating more and more internal states that you can't it it just makes it more challenging for you to get over for the next time and instead say okay i'm not perfect try to find the things that you can influence and the things that you can change for the next time and move forward except that you're not going to be perfect in your pursuit a hundred percent of the time but commit to trying to better your approach the next time and get a little bit better and a little bit better focus more on the decisions that will give you the best chance at putting you into that position where you're able to put more quality time and directed focus at improving and try your absolute best to recognize when your emotional self is trying to pull you off of those things and get comfortable making that decision to do the thing that maybe you don't feel like doing right now, whether that be going to bed on time, whether that be making yourself get up early enough that you don't sleep and get lethargic during the day, making yourself do the mobility work that is boring and is not uh, instantly gratifying and doesn't feel good at the time, making the nutrition choices that you need to best line up with your goals. These are the things that you do and those are the real sacrifices you're making to win not just not just using it as a phrase to pump yourself up for the right now motivation that you need it's a tool and if that works then that works but i'm just encouraging you to recognize that it's more than that and what it really means it's it's it means so much more than the right now it means the decisions that you make to continue progressing and those are the choices that are going to make you better than you are now and constantly moving towards the highest level that you can reach so thank you guys so much for listening i know it was a long video i hope it was helpful and uh, i think this is one of the fundamentally most important discussions to have with yourself and to recognize if you're really interested in actually getting better uh, so i hope you found at least some Uh, some encouragement in that 
and and see it as an empowering situation instead of one that is uh, frustrating. I'm not trying to scare you off from from committing yourself to being better at these things. I'm just trying to help you better prepare yourself for when you get to a point where it stops being easy and you have to put more work in to go a little bit further and recognize that it can be done and it is worth it to do if you really care about the pursuit that you are, are saying that you're passionate about. So thank you guys so much. I will talk to you all very soon. Have a great day.